All right, what's up? We're getting this out early today on a Wednesday. I'm feeling productive. I had fucking tons of job interviews today. Already got a call back on one of them. Didn't get that one, but the, again, that's fine. Good. Fucking good. I don't need that one. On to the other three. We'll see if I get them. I've got myself this um, mountain candy that I poured. This video is brought to you by Sycamore Brewing and Matt Mountain Candy. Get yourself a can. Um, I'm in a really good mood this evening. It's almost Halloween time. Um, I'm watching Halloween 1978 in the background. If you haven't seen that film, I mean, you're just a fucking idiot. Um, but let's let's get into it. I just want to start by saying a huge, huge, huge congratulations to Michael Sharaman. Dude, I just want to start this video on a positive note. So I'm going to I'm going to start it with you. I, I'm really proud of you, man. You made the moves you needed to make. Um, you, you know, that trade for Jameer Gibbs really paid off. You scored 154 points this week. Uh, Scott didn't stand a fucking chance. Um, so congrats, uh, or I'm, I almost said congrats, Scott. Congrats, Michael. It's been a long time coming, you know. It's been really tough for you, um, acclimating into the league. So to see you finally get that win, it's nice. I'm happy for you, and, and you deserve it, you know. The first couple of weeks, first four weeks, you were putting up numbers, so... That win was going to come eventually. Um, it's here now. So bask in it. Enjoy it. You know, but don't forget, we still got like seven weeks left. So don't get complacent. I know you got that win. You're on the board. But shit, bro, you're still in last. So you're still in the thick of it and you still got to pull yourself out. But I'm, I'm happy with how your team played this week. I really am because I picked you to win and you won. And you picked or you were playing my arch rival. And I guess we'll just lead into Scott with that being said. I was going to come on here and, you know, yell at you and berate you and um, all those kinds of things. But look, man, I had a really good weekend with you in Greenville. I did. I did. I enjoyed my time with you. It's always a good time with Scooter. You know, Scoot's such a scoot your booch kind of guy, you know, really gets you going. Uh, he's just a good guy to be around. Good mentality guy. You know, he's 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 funny. He's um, uh, funny looking. Um, he's just a great all-around guy, and I fucking love you, Scott. I do. But don't let that confuse you. I still think that the the Garrett Wilson trade was bullshit, but <laughs> whatever. But you're in trouble, man. You're in trouble. You're sitting at 2-5. and five. Jerome Ford might be hurt now, so that's something that you need to look into. Um, maybe thinking about a, another replacement. Maybe you could hit my line. Maybe we can do something, you know. Uh, maybe we can get a trade going. Um, I, I still want to help you out, you know. I'm still open to discussing trades with you. But I got to say, you, at the end of the year, when I give out end-of-season awards, it's no spoil spoiler alert to say that you will win the most frustrating GM to deal with award. That's what you will win. Um, so, but again, top guy. You're a top fella, a top bloke, and I fucking love you. Um before we move on, though, for the rest of the games, uh, so but Michael moves to one and six, and uh, Scott drops to two and five, uh, but they don't move up. So Michael's still in twelfth. Scott's still in eleventh. Before we move on to the next slate of games, I just want to say this is a public service announcement. It's not directed at anyone in particular, even though if you think about the words I'm saying, it kind of is. Look, you are as the GM of of your team. You are responsible for managing your roster. If you leave a guy in the IR spot who's no longer injured and they play their game, you can't move that person anymore. It's the same thing with trying to move a bench player to your starting lineup during or after their game. You can drop that motherfucker, but you can't you can't you can't move him to a new roster status. So keep that in mind. Um, there was some some stuff going on this past weekend about that. So keep that in mind. Um, I don't want to see anyone else have to go through that. If you have a player on IR, fucking make sure that player is still listed as injured by the league. Because if the league doesn't list them as injured, that's out of my fucking hands. There's nothing I can do as the commish um, to override that. So keep that in mind. Um, the next topic of discussion I wanted to bring up is trade vetoing. I think it's getting a little bit out of control, you know. Um, there are a lot of trolls in this league, and they like to have their fun. But guys, we can't be vetoing fair trades. Don't don't be vetoing fair trades. That just kills the integrity of the veto rule. Now, of course, if you think that a trade is vetoable, by all means, I can't stop you. This is a democracy. If you want to veto a trade at the end of the day, 
That is your God-given right as an American citizen to veto that fucking trade. But guys, let's have better discretion, right? We can't be vetoing fair trades. So I just want to make that known. I'm addressing it. I'm not banning vetoes. I can't do that. But let's let's not just veto every fucking trade, all right? I'm looking at you, Sparty Boy, and I'm looking at you, Hunter Beam. Um, you guys are great, though. I love that you guys are in this league. But come on. Let's maybe tone it down a bit. But come on. Come on. Um, but yeah, that's what I have to say about that. Um, it looks like the full team swap between Spard and Beam was just a giant joke, which in hindsight, pretty hilarious. That trade got vetoed anyways, though. So if you guys want to make, you know, team swap trades, that's fine. Like if it's fair, that's fine. And I thought it was relatively fair. Um, you know, both, both of the, the, you know, Chernobyl Tomahawks and Beam Machine are in the, in, high up in the standing. So Technically, it's a fair trade, but I guess I guess the league didn't want it to happen. Also, I kind of got duped into vetoing the trade anyways, and I was the last veto, so it is what it is. That trade got vetoed, but let's come on, guys. Let's have better discretion on what we're vetoing. Um, let's not be children, okay? The next thing I want to address, um, and I'm going to change this next year so it doesn't happen, roster limits for positions. We can't have people hoarding all the fucking quarterbacks. Prelly, I know what you're doing. Technically, it's legal. You know, because there's no rule. Because I didn't think of, I didn't think of that before. There's no rule against it. But, dude, you, you've completely sabotaged your own team because you wanted to be funny, and it is funny. But you look at your bench. You've got six mid quarterbacks on your bench, and then like one backup wide receiver, and then some random fucking running back. What happens if your guys get hurt? You're toast. You're finished. So honestly, keep doing what you're doing, Pirelli. I don't give a fuck. If you want to kill your own team, be my guest. But next year, there will be there will be position limits on the, on the quarterbacks. You can only we'll vote on it. We'll vote on it. But I'm thinking four is the max because there's just no reason to have six quarterbacks. There is no fucking reason for it. So other than the trade rate people, which is what Pirelli is trying to do, and he tried to do it to me today. Also, another rule I want to get across the board: please don't fucking call me at seven in the morning. Talking about, ooh, commissioner. What happened to my train? Ooh, commissioner. I don't give a fuck. If my blinds are closed, I don't give a fuck. Don't call me at 7 in the morning. Don't do it. Please, don't do it. Also, I can't really answer your phone calls during the day anyways. I'm on the floor. I just don't have the ability to. I would love to sit here and chat with you all day, Pirelli, about fantasy football. But I got a job, brother. So you call me nine times a day, it's going to change nothing. But please don't call me in the morning. Please don't fucking call me in the morning. I was literally asleep, I think. For the first call, I was asleep, I think. But the rest of them, man, come on. Just know your role, all right? Just know your role. All right, let's get back into the actual week here. Um, so, yeah, Michael, 154 to 101. Uh, next game was uh, Ethan versus Ken Bob. I feel bad for Kinley here. This was a tough L to take. Bijan Robinson apparently was ill on the sideline, and, and the league didn't do a good, or the Falcons didn't do a good enough job reporting it to the league. So he was active and then just fucking didn't play. I heard rumblings that, you know, Bijan wasn't feeling well and he didn't want to tell the team because he wanted to play. And when it became time to play, he couldn't go. Um, so that sucks. You know, maybe it would have been different. You only lost by 18 points. It could have been way different. Maybe Bijan goes out and gets 20 if he's fully capable of that. Um, so it's just a bad beat, man. It's a bad beat. You drop it 2-5. and five, But, again, you're a man's man. You're out there on those fucking oil rigs. If there's anyone I can trust to pull themselves up by the bootstraps, it's Ken Bob. So we'll see what you do next week. Ethan, solidified yourself in my eyes as a playoff team. Um, another win, uh, sitting at 4-3, and three, still in 5th. So... You're still very much a contender. Um, not much else to say other than that. Uh, you know, you've you've got this knack of bouncing back when you take L's, uh, and I I respect that mentality. You've got that good mentality. Um, so, congrats to you, brother. Cheers to another win. And uh, if I see you in the playoffs, nothing but love. Uh, next game is uh, the jokester of the league versus. NFL Young Boys, Pirelli versus NFL Young Boys. What Pirelli did in this game was a whole lot of fucking nothing. 
93 points, losing to G-Man, 93 to 134. Um, you know, basically G-Man took Pirelli, he took his pride, he took his dignity, he turned that son bitch sideways, and he stuck it right up his candy ass, straight up in, uh, straight up in there. Just, just, just wrecked him. Just totally wrecked him. Is it time to hit the panic button? Is it time to hit the panic button, little baked bean? I think it is because your bench is shite, total shite. It's just a bunch of mid-ass quarterbacks, and you're gonna continue to to lose if you don't fucking stop sabotaging your own fucking team. Um, Garrett, same thing I say about you every week. Just continuing to win, hottest team in the league, six wins in a row. Sitting at six and one, um, it's just how it be. It's just how it be. You're just unbeatable at the moment, um, and I'm excited to see you know if you can keep it up. We'll see about that, and when I make my picks in the next uh, next couple minutes here, this next game was game of the week. Um, it might win game of the year. Chernobyl Tomahawks versus Docs Rocks motherfuckers. Another loss for Rocky. That's two losses in a row. You can put two L's together, but not two dubs together. That's kind of concerning. I say this every week. You know where I stand from your team. You need to get Jay Jettis back, obviously, but that's out of your control. You're sitting at three and four. You're in sixth. Um, and you play me this week, so it might not end well for you. You might be three and five. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. I hope you're enjoying Europe. Um, you know, don't do anything I wouldn't do over there. Um, I'm sure your bowel movements are fucking pristine. Because when I went to Europe, I didn't have diarrhea for a whole week. And that's like, that's like a record. So, um, shout out to you in your healthy digestive system. Um, Spardella, cruised. Cruised. Well, I don't want to say you cruised, but um, you kind of cruised to another victory. Uh, again, Tyreek and Tua. Tua didn't have like a great game. I think he only had 10 points, but... The rest of your team stepped up in a big way. 147 points this week, sitting at 5-2. and two, You have now leaped Frog Pirelli into second place because Pirelli lost this week. So Chernobyl Tomahawks kind of was faltering in the middle of the year or in the early weeks of the year, but he's picked himself up by the bootstraps just like Kinley's going to do, and he's back up here where he belongs in second. Continues to impress. Um, I have nothing bad to say about Chernobyl Tomahawks. I feel like every single week when I talk about Spard's team, I just never have anything mean to say or negative to say because he's always just putting in performances. And to the people that, you know, ask me, oh, Squid, how come you're never nice to me in these videos? Well, start winning fucking games. Learn from Sparty Boy because he's fucking doing pretty well. So good win, Spard. Um, sitting in second. Solid job. Next game. Now, this was the game where the controversy uh, uh, took place and Gunboat had a little temper tantrum. Uh, B Machine, 141, Gunboat, 73. Look, let's put it into perspective, Cruz. You were never going to win this game even if you had a quarterback. Like, even if you had a quarterback in your roster, they were not going to score 70 points. You lost by 70 points. There's just no fucking way. So I get where you're coming from. I really do. I do get where you're coming from. But we just need to make sure that we're paying better attention to who we have in our, in our IR spots, you know? Because the same shit would have happened to anyone else in this league, whether it was me, Spartella, Beam, Luke, anybody, anybody. The same shit would have happened. It wouldn't have been able to be overturned. Um, so this is where we're at. This is where we're at. Uh, it was a tough loss, though, and that's that's three in a row for you. You've dropped to ninth below the, below the Kraken. Um, things are starting to implode, but again... Do you have that winner's mentality? I think that you do, because I don't have, I, I'm not friends with anybody that can't pick themselves up by the bootstraps. And I think you're gonna do that. Will it be this week? I don't know, but you gotta find out, you know, a rhythm. You gotta find a rhythm, because right now you're totally out of sync. And I hate to see it. Your ship is starting to to derail. You're, you're, you might pull one of those fucking, it's like you just hopped into a submarine with an Xbox controller and the shit caved in on you, you know? That's what it's like. But I, I would like to think that you're like James Cameron. I don't know if you know who that is. But he went down in the submarine one time and he came right back up. So that's what I would hope for you. So, Gumboat, gotta get your shit together. Gotta get your shit together. 
Uh, Bean, on the other hand, has gotten their shit together and has earned my respect consistently the last two weeks. Another big time win. Lamar Jackson just balling out. Like he had 40 points. I started Detroit's defense in my game too, so he shit all over my defense. Um, sitting at five and two and in third, I think this is the year that Beam has earned my respect. He's not, he's no longer skating by, you know, he's no longer getting these 96 to 85 victories. He's putting up fucking points. I mean, he, he just won 41 this past week. So good job, Beam. I said last week that you were the little engine that could, you still are in my eyes, but you're starting to turn into a little bit of a fucking juggernaut. You're starting to turn into a machine. So um, maybe we can rebrand you to actually being the beam machine if you get a win this next week. So congrats to you, my brother. Uh, another good win. And finally, my game with Luke. This was a bad game for both of us, I think. 107 to 92. I didn't have the greatest week. Um, I'm just struggling at the quarterback position. You know, I just feel like I haven't been able. I mean, there were a couple weeks there where Brock Purdy was putting up points, but I haven't been able to feel a consistent quarterback yet, and that's weird having Joe Burrow and having to say these things. But here I am at three and four. This is my third win in a row. I said I would pull myself up from the fucking bootstraps, and I pulled myself up from the fucking bootstraps. This is how you do it. If you want some inspiration, look to me. I will show you the way. Um, Luke, I don't know what's going on with you. Again, remember what I told you. Maybe it's just going to take an average season for you to finally get the dub in the championship game. But you're starting to slip down the rankings a little bit too far, and you need to get a, you need to get a win next week. You're sitting in 7th at 3-4. and four. I'm sitting at 8th at 3-4. and four. Uh, What decided this game was the Thursday night game, Duck and Camara. Um, those two are the MVP of my team and the reason I've won three in a row. Hopefully... Joe Burrow can get back in form, and that three, that tandem, along with Stefan Diggs, <sighs> damn, damn, but we'll have to wait and see, um, but yeah, that was the recap, uh, we'll take a look at the standings, Michael in 12th, Scoots in 11th, Kinley in 10th, uh, in 9th is Cruz, in 8th is myself, 7th is Luke, 6th is Docs Rocks Motherfuckers, Fifth is Ethan. Fourth is Little Baked Bean. Third, Beam. And two, Spardella. And then one is G Man. Um, so we're starting to get some separation at the top with that loss from Pirelli. G Man is now solely in first place at six and one. And let's just take a look at week eight and let's make some picks. Let's see what we got here. Um, first game up on the docket is last place versus first place. Team Suicide versus NFL Young Boys. This is a tricky one because I would like to see Michael continue his his reign of, of getting dubs, but Garrett is tough right now. And Garrett's won six in a row. Can he win seven in a row? No, I'm picking Michael. I'm picking Michael. Um, I picked Michael last week. I just feel like I'm picking him again. I'm picking him again. Um, I'm picking Michael to, to get the huge, huge upset over Garrett uh, and to keep moving up those standings. I, I believe in you, brother. I believe in you, my Indian brother. Keep pushing. Um, next game, Gunboat versus Ethan. This one could go either way, um, but I feel like Gunboat is sinking. I feel like Gunboat is sinking, so I'm going to pick Ethan. I just feel like Ethan's mind is right right now. And I just don't think Cruz's mind is right. And I'm not going to pick someone whose mind isn't right. So come on, man. Focus up. I still believe in you. I do. But you got to prove yourself. You got to prove yourself. So if you get this win this week against Ethan, you're back in the mix and you've proved yourself. But until then, I'm picking Ethan. Um, next game is Ken Bob versus Scooters. Again, Scooter, I love you, but I can't pick you. You have the worst team in the league right now, um, and you might be short another running back. So I'm going with Kinley. Tough loss last week for Kinley. I think he bounces back. He's got that oil rig juice up in him, you know, so uh, Ken Bob for the dub. Um, next game is Lil Baked Bean versus uh, Spardella. This is easy. I'm picking Spardella. Um, I look at, I look at Little Baked Bean's team, and yeah, he's got some good running backs. But I'm really, like, if I were going up against him, I would not be fucking scared. I would not be scared at all. Kind of a fraud, almost, really. Um, and I just think that Chernobyl 
he just has that experience. He's got that, that musto and that gusto, you know? I don't know what that means, but he's got something, and he's going to show Pirelli what he's got coming come in, in week eight. So, um, you know, easy dub for Spard. I think this is actually the blowout of the week. I think Spard comes in and just wipes the fucking floor with Pirelli. Um, next game is Beam versus Washington Foreskins. I hate to do this, Beam, because I was just hyping you up, but I think Luke really needs to get back on track, and I back him too. Uh, I'm going to pick Luke this week to win against Beam. It's all right, Beam. You'll be fine, but Luke needs it more than you right now, and the league ain't the league unless Luke is in the playoff picture, so um, I'm rolling with Luke. I'm rolling with Luke. And then the last game... You know how it is. You know how it goes. Myself versus Rocky. Rocky, a very dear friend of mine who I, I love very much. But I'm sorry, man. I'm going to fucking murder you. I'm going to embarrass you. And I'm going to spit in your face with this dub. Um, it may have been a little bit disrespectful. Maybe a little, maybe I took that part too far. But uh, I'm just really confident right now. Uh, maybe I'm being a bit egotistical. I don't know, but I just feel unstoppable right now with the way my team is playing. As long as my running backs are playing at a high level and Diggs is getting catches, if I can just get a, a decent performance out of my quarterback, I, I think I'm I think I'm make, I'm think making the playoffs, man. I'm, in, I'm three and four, I'm in eighth, and it's only up from here. Three wins off the trot, three wins in a row. If Rocky loses this game, that's three losses in a row, um, which he needs to greatly avoid. But... Um, yeah, that's kind of where my picks are at. So I'll leave you guys with this. This has been great so far. The first seven weeks, this is the halfway point. So look at your records, look at your team, and think to yourself, halfway through the season, was this where I was expecting to be? I'm sure a lot of you would say no. I'm sure some of you would arrogantly say yes. Um, but just know that, that there's always next year, the guys who are at the bottom who may not make it, there's always next year. For the guys at the top, it's crunch time, baby. For the guys in the mix, pull yourself up because it's time to fucking go. It's time to fucking go. Lost that game last week? Good. Won that game last week? Don't get complacent. Time to pull yourself up. Cheers to week eight. I'm going to finish this mountain candy and go take a shower. So, peace.